Hello everyone, my name is T Hunter. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you so much for coming back. So today, as you see, I am not alone. I am joined by a very special guest. And today we wanted to discuss a hot topic. How do emotionally unavailable women damage good men? We saw this post on Instagram and instead of just going back and forth in comments, I said, hey, let's just do a video together. Let's have a conversation. So without further ado, Mr. Beal, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hunter, for this uh, invitation and this space to talk. Uh, as you said, I am LJ Beal here in Chicago, Illinois, uh, and I am looking forward to a good conversation. It's a topic that I uh, feel very passionate about, and I'm interested and looking forward to digging into it. All right. All right. So couple of weeks ago, I'm scrolling on Instagram and I get to Beal's story. And he has this post that said, why is it that people don't talk about how women who are emotionally unavailable, how they can damage good men? So I was like, okay, this is good. Are you going to do a video soon? And so here we are. I guess I volunteered myself to be in the video as well. So um, yeah, you were not throwing me out there by myself. So oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's like, you're you going to have to help. You know, we're not going to be by ourselves. We're both going to be in the like boat. How about that? Right. So, um, yeah, I was just interested, you know, in having you start the conversation because too many times we see in the comments, women will try to flip it back. Well, what about, what about men who aren't emotionally available? I was like, I get it, sis, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about us today. So, right. If you would share, you know, just your experience, um, even like your definition or your perspective of women who are unavailable emotionally and how that affects you. Yeah, I think uh, this is a loaded conversation because uh, anytime there is a social media post that seemed to be pro-man or pro the male's perspective or position in the relationship or any negativity he might have received, there's always this, well, what about when they, you know, what about this, what about that? But this, this is a critical piece that we really need to unpack because women have damaged men in significant ways, being emotionally unavailable, uh, however, expecting to be the recipient of all the virtues and all the pleasantry that go into making a relationship work. I get the position of women who throw that, well, I want my man to leave. I got you on that. Mm -hmm. There is no shortage of leadership in me anywhere. I am a take charge kind of, kind of dude. Uh, but on the other side to that, men, the bottom line is this, men have feelings and expectations and desires too. My personal experience has been you know, women tend to like and find my, my intelligence and work ethic and consistency attractive. They tend to find it attractive. Uh, <laughs> and they show up looking for that. They enjoy the conversations. They enjoy all the poetic lines I can come up with. They enjoy the chase. But when it's time for reciprocity, it's a mm -hmm. dating. It's kind of a you know, and this has been an inhibition in my relationships, uh, getting my, I, I shudder to say it this way because I don't want to be attacked as being a wimp or something, but getting my needs met as well. <laughs> That's not being a wimp. It's like you said, it's reciprocity. Why can't the relationship be a two-way street? If I expect to be respected, why shouldn't I expect to also respect my husband? Exactly. That's the other side that's often uh, often overlooked or not giving the, ten the necessary attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say um, in my single days, one of my really good friends has sent me this video and it was a woman interviewing two of her male friends. And long story short, they had said, you know, men are hunters. And you know, I'm thinking, okay, great. You know, so I just need to, you know, be busy about my purpose. You know, at the time I was in graduate school, just do what I need to do. And God will send that man when the time is right. 
However, like my husband wants to be pursued as well. He does not want to do all of the emotional work. It can't just be, oh, wife, you look wonderful. Thank you for everything that you do for our family. Um, I appreciate you. I love being married to you. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. eating it all up. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Thank you. And that's it. Like, no, like, he wants to be appreciated too. He wants me to tell him, I appreciate what you do for our family. Thank you for being an effective covering. Thank you for loving God first so that you know how to love me and our daughter. But if I don't say those things, then I'm sure he could feel as you've expressed, like, okay, where's the rest of property? Right. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. See, as much as women want the emotional attentiveness, and, and I get, because even with me, I, I'm not here to paint myself as some form of Zeus, king of the gods or something, okay? <laughs> All right? <laughs> because I have my very emotionless ways, or, or I, I, I can be like my grandfather, uh, I could say rigid, or, or it's hard to really gauge how I'm feeling about a matter. I have to be really connected to you in intimacy for me to, to show you that level of, of vulnerability. Uh, I don't like exposing myself to that. That, that is a real, uh, I have to really like you in order to give you that. And once I am pouring that out, and there's no reciprocity, there is a staleness or stiffness, it's, it's, it's not going to encourage me to, to, to continue in that. And it has caused some tensions uh, in my relationships. Uh, even I could even venture out to say in my friendships and partnerships to where I can become very nonchalant, dismissive, avoided, oh God, absolutely avoided. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to argue or fight or scuffle or go back and forth with anybody. Right. I have a very wonderful relationship with the word okay. I will okay you in a heartbeat. Because <laughs> I ain't going back and forth with nobody. Once I've made up my mind, once I've centered myself, uh, my decisions come from personal wrestling, the things I read, research, observe, experience. Once I've settled on something I'm comfortable with, I see no need of the back and forth. But if I like you, like if, 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 if I've made that decision, like you said, Hunter, that I'm really going to give you a pursuit, I can, it's like a, a switch or something. I can hit a switch mm -hmm. and it'll come on. Yeah. And I'll give you that level of exposure, but nothing makes me feel more empty or taken advantage of than to go there, get into that element with a person who in some way showed up and made me feel like they were there too. Mm. Like I thought this was going to be an exchange only to find out there's no exchange. Oh man, talk about clamping up and withdrawing and be, oh man, horrible feeling. And that's what I don't think women give enough attention to. That men have feelings too. We may not be as expressive with them, but mm. we have. That's a really good point. Um... We live in the day and age where if you don't post it on social media, then it didn't happen. So this idea of, well, Bill doesn't talk about his emotions, so he must not have any. No, that's false. And that's false for any man. Um, we want <clears throat> women and men alike to be emotionally expressive, and we want them to, to a degree. Mm -hmm. We want emotional maturity with that expression. We want there to be some form of, you know, decency, have discernment, you know, don't just pour everything out to anybody. Don't just explode because you're angry. Like there's ways to express that, but those are learned skills. And some of our parents, grandparents and so on and so on, they grew up in the era where children were to be seen and not heard. So if you tell a child and that child grows into an adult, you know, basically, hey, when it comes to your emotions, you got to bottle that up. You're too sensitive. You can't cry too much. People are going to take advantage of you. They think that you're soft or you're weak, you're a punk, whatever it is. Then they get to be our age and they're either in marriages or pursuing relationships, even in friendships and business partnerships, where when it comes to time, when it comes time to express emotions around something, 
they, they clamp, they clamp up. Mm-hmm. I can't, I, I can't do that because big mama told me, you know, not to do that. And it's like, no, here is the space where I need you to exercise that skill. And it's not there. Mm-hmm. Or yep. here is a space where somebody has just poured a lot of emotions out and you don't know how to be a safe space and listen and say, you know what, maybe I don't get what you're going through, but I can only imagine how difficult that is. What do you need me to do? Do you want me to help you resolve? Do you want me to help you do problem solving? Or do you just want me to listen? Like what would be most helpful to you? But Mm -hmm. if we don't teach our children those skills, teach them how to use their words and also teach them how to use their ears, then we could be grooming the next emotionally unavailable men and women. Right, exactly. There's another dynamic that comes into this though, because like I started by saying, certain qualities about me women will find attractive, uh, but there is, for whatever reason, I've dealt with um, a hesitation to actually be into me as a person. Um, and wherever that comes from, whether I've contributed to that or not, I have not nailed down an answer on that. But here's where I'm trying to go. What I'm trying to say is this, is that women will figure out ways to play with me and to get what they want. And when you have a man like myself, like some of my friends, like other guys I know who are smart, who are driven, who are stern even, it gives off a vibe of protection and security. And that could just be very well all they're looking for. Uh, and, and, and there is this use, usury uh, attitude. Mm-hmm. You know, w- women do that. They use men for what they can get until the man they really want come along. Now, I know, I know, I know. The same can be said. Well, men do the same. I, 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 know, I know that. But we're here to talk about women today, okay? Right, right. <laughs> so women, women do that. And those have been my experiences. I have found myself really into certain women who I thought were really into me. But something else come along that seemed to be more, more attractive, better personality. Because, see, I'm not one who I, 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 I may not have the best personality because I don't, you know, if you see me or if you spend a lot of time interacting around me, I don't do a lot of smiling and giggling and goofy and ha ha he he and all of that stuff. For the most part, I have a very serious disposition. That could be attractive, but it may not be fun. It may not come across as fun. And so, you know, I've had to deal, I've, I've right. had to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And it's great that you can acknowledge like, hey, this is who I am. And maybe with the right woman who opens up that safe emotional space for you to be vulnerable, right. we might see you kiki cat cat a little bit more. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly. So it's like, it's not a matter of, oh, they're just too serious and oh, they're just mean. It's like, they don't know you. Like we, social media has definitely ruined some of us with this idea of the more you share, the more real and connected you are. You don't know who's looking at your page. Like future, you know, singles, come on. Your future spouse could be out there looking at your page right now, watching you go completely off on your family. And they're like, oh, okay. So when he or she gets upset, they take to Facebook, they take to Instagram, they take to the World Wide Web and they air everything out. Do I want to be in a relationship with someone where they could just go ahead and share all these personal, intimate, vulnerable details that I've shared with them because they're angry? No. Right. See, see, that's the thing. See, this social media has really messed us up. Social media has really messed us up in a lot of ways because we have misjudged people based off one conversation, one thread on Facebook that we just totally disagree with them on. Oh, yes. Without factoring in the societal, cultural, uh, and personal dynamics that might influence uh, those perspectives that they are commenting. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to talk to people. Talk to people. If you spend time around me, you know, from a distance, like I said, you might pick up a, oh, he's tight, rigid, uptight. You might pick that up. 
But if you get in my inner space, you'll see I can be a big kid. Like I can be a real big kid. <laughs> but it goes back to something you said. You pointed it out right. You said it right when you said that place with Pete that people make you feel that there's a safe place there. That you're not going to screenshot my mess. I say something crazy. You're not going to screenshot and post it all over social media. You're not going to make me the target of your social media Facebook post or trying to throw shade. And your next sermon is not going to be about preachers shouldn't talk like that, not even in text. You know, I, I, I don't know. And I'm not even saying I'm saying something totally graphic or, or drastic or, or that contradicts the faith. Right. But people come up with things. People have these expectations of how you should live and they hold you to that, not, not factoring in the human component of everybody. And that's what I, I, I have not always done this right, but I try to give people space to be themselves and express themselves. And if it depends on our relationships, I may hold you accountable, but it, it just kind of, it really depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's good, you know, mentioning the vulnerable space because if we disagree on something, is this going to be, we just agree to disagree? after a certain point or are you going to read me for phil is my is your next facebook status about me i'm just not tagged in it you know tag me if you about it but you're not okay <laughs> <laughs> no because i feel like hey like instead of writing a subliminal post i could call or i could text you and if i don't have your number perhaps the problem is me and i need to go to my prayer closet instead of taking to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and trying to, you know, in however many characters, execute the perfect clapback. And that person might not even be following me. I might be blocked. So it's like you exerted all that energy for what? But um, I don't know. Sometimes we confuse emotional availability with just very intense emotional expression. It's like, right. mm, no, we have a full range of emotions, but that does not mean that we can communicate them in such a way where even if I disagree with you, you still feel respected and you still feel hurt and vice versa. So yeah, yeah. getting yeah, on the planet yeah. and having these arguments, it's like, that's draining. So I've grown to a place where I can disagree with you and that just be that I don't need to comment. I don't need to do anything else. Yeah, I can go on about my day. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, the, the conversational component has to be factored in. Uh, it is extremely important to be able to handle a decent, coherent, accurate uh, conversation around needs, expectations, uh, desires. Um, that That is very... that. That is extremely important because you have to be able to feel things and then describe them without losing yourself or the person in the process. Mm -hmm. Let me take it a step further. If, if I have upset, offended, or created an insecurity, because we, we can do that to another person, to where they don't want to have this conversation with you or with me rather, that's something that needs to be communicated, okay? It needs to be communicated. But I think the other side of that, and this was the nature of the post that you and I talked about, right? is some of us come in two situations with full knowledge that I'm not there, I don't know when I'll be there. Mm -hmm. In fact, maybe I don't even want to be there with you. Uh, or whatever the case, but back to my point, they see some benefits and they're going after them benefits. Meanwhile, I'm fully investing myself when the only thing you want is what you can see and that's it. That's, that's the tension, that, that, that's some of the issue. But we gotta be able to communicate. We gotta be able to have a conversation. I, I, I'm not the guy who's gonna do this, but maybe some man somewhere, you might come and say, I'm not really ready for that but I'll let you take me out on a date and I'll let you spend all your money on me, but I ain't giving nothing in return. I don't know any men. You <laughs> might find some out there, but I don't know who's in <laughs> There might be some in the comments. We don't know. 
<laughs> we're not judging because know. maybe you're not you're maybe you're not there to say I'm not going to spend my resources on you if this isn't going to go somewhere. Right. Everybody's <laughs> not there. Everybody's not right. there. They, they might, okay, well, if I could just razzle dazzle her on this first date, then there's probably a shot. And she's like, no, there isn't. There isn't. Right. I came exactly. for the crab legs. I'm done. Yeah. And, and that's it. I don't know. Maybe some, but, 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 but it could be a situation of a man may think that he's going to be in an old school man were able to do that. I mean, I do know of situations, preachers that we all know, Paul Morton, Bishop Blake, all, they tell stories of how their wives weren't interested initially, but it was the chase that persuaded them. I don't know that we're dealing with that kind, of, those kind of women anymore nowadays. Right. And so, you know, now women hang their, their commitment on whether the, their willingness to explore on whether or not they have an initial interest. Sometimes I kind of wonder, like, well, how do you know whether or not you're interested in the person without a conversation? But whatever. I think women are thinking differently now uh, than the May Blakes or the Deborah Mortons and, and all those. Uh, but I, I can see power in letting a man lay out a vision for you before you decide that you're not interested. I, I, it could go. You know, I, I understand the, 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 the element of the day that we're living in. Uh, how be ever, besides all of that, I think what we got to do, if you're going to push that whole, uh, I'm not interested in you, then then say that and mm -hmm. maintain that. But exactly. don't allow us to be showing up to you fully invest, fully ready to make investment when you know you're not there and then you're just going to play game. I, I, that, 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 that is sickening. No, it really is. And it's hard to watch in real life and especially hard to watch on television because any narrative can be spun. And we don't know these people aside from what's being shown. So we are making these judgments based on however many minutes of an interaction that has been aired, edited, and you know, packaged just right, you know, for those ratings. Um just this uh, past week, you know, we were watching, my husband and I were watching the reunion for Married at First Sight. And one of the couples that said yes to staying married on decision day, the woman waited until, you know, the husband sold all of his things and they moved in together. And she tells him, not only do I not want to stay married to you now that the cameras are gone, but I was never attracted to you and I never loved you. And I'm like, whoa, like, so you played the long game just to say no? Like, to yeah. me, that is like the epitome of like emotional, being emotionally unavailable. Where it yeah. was like, okay, so to a certain extent, you're ready for this marriage and this commitment, but past that extent, like, is it too scary? I don't know. We just know that a lot of time and emotions and effort have been invested. And now it's it's like it's all for naught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I and that that's the that, I think that's the angle I'm coming from is that um, I, I think that now with women having as much information and exposure and whatever else goes into uh, the way we have cycled dating, love, romance, and all that, have we cycled it out? I think that if we're going to drive home, if the, okay, let me say this. If, if that's the narrative of the day, that the way things get started is a man approaches, but I have to be interested, then let's leave it there. Okay. It can, I, I don't know how it's going to be both. How, uh, unless there's going to be a caveat that says, if he approaches and I'm not interested, maybe I'll give him opportunity to spark my interest, mm -hmm. whatever. But but I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we're going to cause that to be cooperated together uh, that doesn't leave the man feeling played with if the interest never develops. Right. It might be better to just say, if I'm not interested, let me not waste this man's time. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not a woman, so I don't know how you all think. But I do <laughs> know as a man, I know as a man, I know how we think. Mm -hmm. And I know men are pursuers and hunters by nature. And that's what we're going to do. We see the prey, we're going after it. 
And I think women have the, the ability to put roadblocks up on that if right. it's done. Mm -hmm. Now you could just have a crazy man who's going to keep pursuing no matter how much. You blocked I'm him on right. social media. You blocked mm -hmm. him on the phone. You, 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 I mean, you, you might have crazy men, but I'm not in that group and neither are the men who I, who right. I know and fellowship with. So, you know, my position is this. Stop playing with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it might be funny, me. but try Jesus. It, Don't it, try it, me. <laughs> right. It might be funny, but but see, here, here's the thing. See, I, I'm too old now. I've, I've gotten old now. I've got older now, and, and I'm not I'm not here for the the malarkey or, or the games. I'm, I'm I'm a little older. Life is more precious now. You know, I'm I'm more accomplished. I've been able to do some very, very uh, tremendous things. Mm -hmm. I've been able to work some good business uh, uh, arrange uh, deals and, 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 and my influence and affluence and, and whatever character. I, I don't have time for things that are not purposeful. Things have to have meaning now. Right. And so uh, for the most part, any woman that I've approached or that I've, that, that I've taken seriously, or, or that has really intrigued me, you know, my first message is very straight to the point. You know, I've observed you. I think it'd be nice to get to know you, or I'm interested in getting to know you on a personal level. Yeah. You know, I make that clear if I hop in your DM, so to speak. You know, you need not assume I'm trying to talk to you if my first message to you is not straight to the point, okay? Right. I can respond to stories. I can make comments. I can like and love your picture. But unless I come straight to the point, then you need not assume that I'm trying to talk to you. That's the way, that's the uh, or that I'm, yeah. I, I've, I've come to now. And, and so, you know, that's why I can say things like, don't play games with me because I'm not playing with you. <laughs> right. Like you said, if that first message is, hey, sis, you're doing a great work for the Lord. That is right. not the same as I've observed you, I find you to be intriguing. I think it would be right. great if I could get to know you better. Like, would you like to go out for dinner? Exactly. Would you like, or, or let's just back it up. Would you Would you be comfortable exchanging numbers? Exactly. There you go. There you go. That, that's exactly right. Right. Because I am very <laughs> complimentary, especially to Black women. If you follow me close enough, you know that I am all things Black. Mm -hmm. Black power, Black activist, Black nationalist. I am really about our community. And so I may, I very well may respond to your story, give you a compliment, uh, say something nice, but that does not, you do not assume that that is a flirtation. I am about cultivating and building the community. And so all of my black queens, whether I really find you physically beautiful or not, mm -hmm. if you put something up uh, that, that is, is wonderful, a business, a hairdo, a makeup, a, a whatever, maybe even if you're into real estate, who knows, whatever you are. Whatever. You know, I, can, I can be very complimentary, but that does not necessitate I'm into you. That's good. That's good. Um, mm, I know year, years ago, uh, a woman had told me, and this is more so speaking to um, why some women might be emotionally unavailable to the man that they know is not their husband. Mm -hmm. So she had given me the advice. She said, you know, once a man has your emotions, you're emotionally invested and he knows that he's got you. Because I'm not saying that women, we are emotionally driven, but we are more emotional. So if a man is catering to that emotional space and he's providing safety for you to be vulnerable, whether he's genuine or he's tricking you, whatever it is, if he can tap into that space where you feel like, wow, like he's a great listener, like, oh, I went through this tragic thing and I actually cried in front of him, you know, whatever it is, you know, some guys are just waiting for that, where it's like, okay, I got her and they're ready to play games if they're not the right man for you, if that's not your husband. So in my dating stages, I was saying, you know, I don't want to get emotionally invested because I already know that I've made this vow. Like God, the next man that I date has to be my husband. 
So if I'm going to be all in, I'm going to be exclusive and we're going to be talking about ring shopping and getting married and where would you like to live and how many kids do you want? I, I don't want to do that with someone that I'm just going to have three dates with. So I'm just speaking to that point around why it is okay for a woman to say, you know, I don't want to be emotionally available to just anybody versus yeah. I'm just going to waste your time. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Women have, see, here's what I tell, I tell the young men, I tell the young lady who I, who I uh, uh, cover, uh, who go to my church or who are, are in my youth department in the jurisdiction or whatever. I, I, I try to um, tell them that the man has a responsibility to pursue, but the woman has the responsibility to respond. And yeah. you get to decide the you do not have to say yes just because this man likes you. You do not have to respond uh, with a yes because he likes you. But it is best for you to give a response. Go on, let it be on record mm -hmm. that he shot his shot, he did whatever, and you said no. But leaving that door open, he sent you a, a cute text. And all oh, you sitting heart faces and blushing and stuff, and you know you don't like the man. Mm. He figures out your occupy job and sends you a dozen roses, and you posting it on Facebook. Oh, this is so sweet. And I have had conversations with women who told me things like, "Well, it was a sweet gesture, but I don't like him." Like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. The man, you got to, you got to make that clear, right? Because if you're gonna blow the thing up and celebrate it. That sounds to me like an invitation. So the next time I'm going to send you uh, 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 flowers and a teddy bear or flowers and candy, you know, so you right. have to cut these things off. Oh, it mm -hmm. was a sweet gesture, but I'm not interested in him. Well, have you told him that? Right. That's what I try to say. I try to tell the young men, be aggressive, step up, roll out the dice, you know, lay it out, roll out the red card. You like the woman, you, you got to... That day of will you go with me circle yes or no, that stuff works in fourth grade. It don't work for grown men. We got to be <laughs> intentional, be deliberate, be focused, okay? I tell the young men that, and I tell the young ladies, don't, and I tell them don't play with these young ladies either. Yeah. If you're not serious, don't mm -hmm. shoot your shot, okay? I tell the young ladies the same thing. Be, 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 if, if you're interested, be a recipient and reciprocate. But if you're not, nip it in the bud, don't have this man spending money and you making it seem like oh it's so sweet he's so adorable he's so nice if you don't like the man say that that's right. the that's where i am now mm -hmm. so i'm not trying to flip it but i am curious um you're saying the man has the responsibility to pursue what happens if the woman is showing a lot of interest in things going to a more serious level and the young men that you are, you know, mentoring are not interested in her? What is the advice that you would give to them? It works the same. It okay. works the same. Okay. She, she, because I, I, I do believe it's okay. I know the church teaches one thing, but I, I believe it's okay that if you just find this man attractive and he just seems to possess the qualities and the characteristics that make your son rise. Hey, it's all right to be a little, you know, hey, it's okay to make that No, I don't have a problem with that. But I tell the young man this, you have to make a decision whether or not you're going to pick that up and turn it into an active pursuit. Okay. You have to make that decision. And if you're not interested. You have to make that clear. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I like. I love your voice. I love your singing voice. I love the work you do. Whatever you know, <laughs> these are just some of the things I, I tell you, man. Right. But at this time, that's not you know whatever. You ain't. I'm not interested. I I don't want. You know. You have to make the decision because I know what it is. See, see, I know what it is to have women in the in in. in and I keep talking about church because that's my primary context yeah but I know what it is to have women buying me cufflinks and ties and I've had women cook bringing me food and stuff I okay. know what that is okay? mm -hmm. I know what it is 
that some of these women are old cougars and I'm just not <laughs> interested. <so. laughs> I made you some right. black peas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because see, I, <laughs> see I, I, I know. See, I be saying stuff in my sermons about how I like to eat or or, or, or the place I like, to, the, the clothes I like to wear. I okay. say stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, next Sunday, I, if I, I have said, see, I like lima beans and turkey tails. I've said that in the next Sunday, the sister shows up with lima beans and turkey tails, for example. <laughs> you know, so I, I know what it is to have women, so to speak, like Ruth did, laying, throwing themselves at my feet. I know what that means. But see, I have to wake up and make a decision about whether or not I'm going to turn this into a pursuit. And if I'm not, I, it's my responsibility to right. be very honest about it. Exactly. So just like men want women to be emotionally available, you know, the same, the same goes for us too. So it's like, okay, if you're putting yourself out there and you're the one bringing the llama beans and the turkey legs and the cufflinks and whatnot, uh, you have to also be okay if he says, you know, I appreciate this, but I do not see this going somewhere. And women right. don't let that turn you into someone who's not emotionally unavailable because unfortunately you got your feelings hurt and the love or the feelings, whatever, were not requi- requited. Right. So that when the man that God wants to present to you comes along, you're not going to waste his time because you're stuck on, well, you know, Bill said he didn't want to be with me. So now I'm just going to lock all my emotions down and can't nobody ever right. get in. And it's like, exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. No one will ever be able to get in and you will damage a good man because yeah. Bill was very clear with you and said, I'm sorry, but no. Right. Yeah. Versus Absolutely. wasting your time and stringing you along. So yeah. and there, there's no need for that. I, I just don't think with grown people, there's no need for things like that. We're grown. Mm-hmm. We should be able to handle those kind of situations. And even if it means we're gonna walk away with our feelings hurt or deeply disappointed. We should be able to chuck it up and, 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 and keep moving and just realize that, hey, I tried and it didn't work. Next, you know, somebody is going to eventually work with somebody. <laughs> right. That's, and we're not saying put yourself out there where you all up in everybody's DMs and you're carrying yourself in a way where, you know, you got mud on your name, man or woman alike. But it's okay to bounce back from a no. And to realize, okay, this person said no, but that doesn't take away from the great person that I am. Right. It doesn't have to. Yeah, your feelings can be hurt. Maybe you need some downtime to recover, um, you know, work on your strategy, <laughs> get, get back in the word, you know, see what the Bible says about you as a man or a woman of faith. Uh, if you're not a believer, you know, whatever it is that you need to do to bounce back. But don't let right. one person saying no mean, well, I'm just never going to find love now. So I guess I'll just be emotionally unavailable so that when a good man or a good woman comes along, I'm bound to screw them over. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, as you can see, the thing can go deeper. Uh, it, it, the thing gets deeper um, with how we're going to have to figure out how to navigate uh, in these times because we have allowed society, I personally believe we have allowed society and influencers Mm -hmm. to obstruct the natural process of how romance and how how God is intended for it to go. Uh, And and, and man has the freedom to chart his own direction. But as we are addressing these times, we're gonna have to be very concerned about how we're making each other feel. Too many, exactly. too, many, too, too many times women have been given uh, the angelic view while men are, 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 are criminalized. And I just don't, I don't know, I don't think that we can continue to perpetuate that narrative, especially in a day where I know quality men who've been messed over with mm-hmm. emotionally unavailable women who knew this man was not checking all her boxes. Mm-hmm. She saw where she, I, I've seen it. Absolutely. I, I have seen it too, where, you know, you, you see the movies, you see the TV shows and in, in real life, you see the guy who is just, you know, going from woman to woman, can't seem to be in a relationship. 
And then if you take that time to get to know him, you realize it's because it was that one woman that did something that really hurt his feelings. And instead of that really hurt, and I'm going to take some time, you know, to heal from that and try to figure out, well, why did it hurt me so much when that person did it, especially if they've, su they've suffered through, but bounced back from rejections before. It's always that one where they have a decision, but okay, am I going to heal from this? Or is this going to pretty much turn me into somebody that I don't even recognize? And same for women too. So, but you got to get to know people outside of social media, just because someone is smiling or not, doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy or they're sad. That could just be who they are or whatever mood they're in that day. We never know just from a video or a picture, a story, what, what have you, what else is going on with that person. You don't know the roots. You're just seeing the surface of what they want you to see. So so if a, if a woman is presenting herself as being emotionally unavailable, guys, I'm not saying it's your responsibility to dig deep and figure out what that thing is, but just know that there is something there. Right, exactly. And you don't have to tell everybody your business. You don't no. have to go into a laundry list of things. Just be upfront. Just say that. Say, I'm not interested. It's just simple. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And if he starts trying to dig, well, why not? Well, you don't owe all that. It's just, I'm not interested. Simple. Right. And if I was advised as a licensed therapist, hey, if you have a client who comes in trying to spill everything in the first session, slow them down and say, you know what? We can get to all of that. You don't know me. I want you to build trust in me. So I don't want you to feel that each session you come in, you've got to spill everything. No, let's work right. through this together. Let's get there. So it's the same. If, if they can tell me that as a licensed therapist, that doesn't mean that when you tell a man, hey, women, you say, hey, I'm not interested. That doesn't mean I've got to tell him why. Exactly. If he can't understand, I'm not interested, I, I'm sorry, that's definitely difficult to navigate, but that does not mean, okay, so here's my life story. How much time do you have so that you'll better understand why I'm not interested in being in a relationship with you? And, and same thing for the men, same thing for the men. You don't, you don't have to lay your head in every Delilah's lap and tell her all your secrets and you wake right. up with no hair and no strength and no power. Yeah. Nobody's expecting that from you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you need to, you need right. to let God tell you, like, hey, this one you can trust. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has definitely been great. Uh, thanks for you know entertaining what I thought. I was like, hey, go ahead and film a video. You're like, great, you're doing it with me. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But no, it's, it's good to have these conversations and see it from, you know, both sides of the same coin. So, so many different perspectives. Now I am married, but Mr. Beal is not. Mm. So <laughs> would you just, just put it out there. You know, if you would like for people to connect with you on social media, go ahead, you know, tell them your handles or not. <laughs> Yo, sure. Absolutely. You're funny, by the way. I want you to know that. <laughs> yes, I'm on Facebook, L. Jerome Bill. And Bill is spelled B as in boy, E-A-L. So that's L. Jerome Bill on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at, at Ladarius Bill. Uh, Twitter is the same, at Ladarius Bill. Um, I also have I've LinkedIn, at Ladarius J. Bill. All right. Uh, so yes, those are my handles that you can find me on. Mm -hmm. And it's it's no okie doke, y'all. You know, he talks about God, cultivating the community, you know, building healthy friendships. So you're not going to follow him and he's in your DMs. Hey, uh, I was wondering. No, that's not going to happen. As he already discussed, that's not going to happen. So you don't have to worry about that, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, but I definitely do, you know, appreciate you doing this video with me and just having this open and honest conversation about a difficult topic, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean that, you know, now we're just, you know, going slug for slug in the comment section. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I do yeah. appreciate this. Um, Certainly. 
Any other closing remarks? Hey, this has been rich. This has been great, fun, full of content. I really hope it inspires somebody and wake up some thoughts uh, and even some questions. I will encourage yes. you to wrestle, wrestle with it. Uh, and yeah, thank you for being a wonderful host. Absolutely. Well, you guys know what's coming. If you have enjoyed this content, please feel free to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel for more content, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a future post. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you again, Debeel. Bye, guys. Thank you.